Hi, everybody. It's Jane Johnston with the Barry Hill Group at Remax Kmosin, and I forgot to put our little thing on the front. <laughs> our little intro? Or, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And action. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> it's Andrew Frank with Royal the Page. Um, another week has gone by, and here we are. And we have, um, we're going to talk stats before we bring in our speaker. We have an exciting speaker today. Mm hmm. Okay. An award winner. Yes. Award winner. So, but uh, first of all, how was your week? A good week. Yeah, a good week. Um, I had a date tonight with my lady on Friday. Date day. We got away for the day. Get had, out of town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we didn't. Uh, we didn't get out of town because we were planning <laughs> to. And then uh, with all the rain and the Malahat uh, in questionable condition and so forth, we decided let's just cancel all our plans, which were extensive, and, uh, and did a staycation here in Victoria. But it was nice. Did you go to a hotel or something? Well, we didn't. Well, we did. We went to the Brentwood Bay Inn and had, you know, the spa stuff, the couple spa stuff, keep keep, keep her happy. I fell asleep on the table. It's a couple's massage, so there's two massages going on at the same time. I'm snoring away because it was just so, like, I wasn't sleeping, but I was very <laughs> relaxed. And all I could hear was this giggling coming from the other side of the room. <laughs> Anyway, and then, uh, you know, hot tub, and it's a great place if you want to get away for a, a, a little getaway. But no, we didn't get a hotel room. because Maybe we should have them, Brentwood Bay Inn, as a guest. Yeah, sure. Maybe I, they'll I can just, put us up. I just <laughs> want to say I'm imagining the um, the sound of somebody snoring and giggling in a room. <laughs> I know. I, it was very romantic. Um, anyway, so that was good. And then Saturday, of course, was back to work. Because um, if you don't go away from town, you end up working no matter what, even though we had plans to do. Um, yeah. Well, I got an accepted offer on a property. Yes. Wow. As a buyer, as a buyer's agent, is that what you're telling me? That's the unicorn. With conditions. Oh, my God. Well, where was it? In Timbuktu? <laughs> it wasn't I can't tell you. I'd have to kill you. No, it's a uh, central sandwich. So yeah, very excited. But you know, the saying that buyers are liars, they, they say that because when yeah. buyers are not liars, when buyers, buyers often think they have a certain, they have a vision. What happens is either the financing changes the vision or the lifestyle or um, anyway. So we ended up actually with the house pretty much what they want, but not in the location they want. And part of that was just, financing i think yeah i mean we've talked about that saying before i don't like that saying buyers are liars but we use it and it's it's not true that buyers are liars buyers have great intentions and their ideas of what they want and our ability to communicate and understand what they're looking for aren't always in alignment and it's all about trying to suss that out and get better at it but people change and they change because the market changes yeah it's be it's a journey right yeah 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 Okay, so let's find out what's going on with the market this week. I have not previewed this today, so oh, I'm excited. This. This is amazing. Nothing has changed. It's the same story. It's the same <laughs> broken record. I'll take the top because you uh, let's switch it up. I'll take the top and you take the, the lower level there. Why are you laughing at me? I'm thinking bunk beds. <laughs> I'm thinking the movie big. Okay, go ahead. I'm being silly today. Okay. All right. So uh, in the last week, actually currently, um, no, in the last week, we've had 149 new listings come live on the market here in Victoria. Well, 137 of the listings on market have gone pending. So just a little bit more coming on market than they're going pending, which is good news. We've had 13 price decreases uh, as opposed to three price increases. Three have come back on market. I'll skip over sold. Uh, 11 have expired. So 11 has expired plus the 137 pending gives us 148 properties that came off market while 149 came on. So really, it's pretty much one to one. And yeah. Plus five withdrawn, it's even more. So the market continues to lower inventory. Right. And so let's talk about that number. Uh, so last year we had record sales of 900 this year. Uh, oh, sorry. 795 this year. We're at 444. 
So, so, this so far this month and what we're at, we're at November 21st, 22nd. Yes. 22nd. So this is three quarters of the way through the month, new listings, 484. So that jives with that other number that we're looking at. And, uh, Last year we had 823, so we're not going to meet that. So what's happening is we're outselling the inventory, and um, that's why our number of active listings is, is at 954 compared to 1813. And last year I remember that being low. Yeah. So yeah. Last last year we thought 1813 was dramatically low, and now it's blown out of the water. Yeah. And What's interesting too, Jane, is like uh, you, you monitor the, our Facebook, you know, the various Facebook groups we have. There's some Facebook groups and our, our colleagues, we and our colleagues are on that are private groups for realtors, not official groups, but a number of the, most of the realtors in Victoria, let's say two thirds of the realtors in Victoria are on these. And I've seen a number of people posting lately, like, hey, I've got a listing. These people want to sell their home. Should I wait till the spring or should we go now? And pretty much everybody who's working with buyers is saying, list now, we need the inventory. So where traditionally somebody might wait till the spring, we're seeing uh, uh, we're seeing that it's not a bad time to list. And you can see that in the, in the numbers. I'm telling Comments? people to wait. <laughs> yeah. I am because I want them to have a choice of inventory on the buying side. So if, if it's a... Uh, a an investment property i'm saying go ahead you know sell it's a great time to sell but on the buying side let's make sure that there's stuff for you to buy so there's yeah. just no choice right now so yeah that's a great point is that you know um it is very individual and, and your individual needs might dictate what the strategy is and the timing but um but just from a perspective of selling a home this year versus prior years it's not a bad time to go on market despite the fact that it's dark and wet and yeah yeah okay so let's bring on yvonne and i added that to the stream too early but that's okay hi yvonne how are you oh sorry let me mute unmute you this is why it's so exciting when it's live i was i was telling yvonne it wouldn't be a show if he said she said they said if we didn't have technical difficulties <laughs> Oh, good. Good morning. Good morning. So Yvonne uh, is coming to us from Calgary. I know her uh, from being online with her, and I'm not sure why my picture is bigger than everybody else's. But I just anyway. changed it. Oh, Sorry. thank you. <laughs> you can fiddle with it in the background. Um, so Yvonne is an award-winning stager. So tell us actually about your award, your top 10 in? Uh, occupied uh, home staging. Yeah. Yeah, it's wonderful. I've uh, received these several years in a row, but it's always a big honor. It's uh, This was the first time that we uh, got awarded for what we call enhanced occupied staging. So when we add a couple of accessories to a property to make it look amazing. Seven so, years in a row? I've had them seven years. I In 2018, I won uh, Stager of the Year Canada, but I have uh, received them, yes, seven years in a row. <laughs> we have a star on the show. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Yvonne works um, with a friend of mine in Calgary, Christian, as well. And so we actually know several people and yes. together. And we love rowing. See, so here we go. Right. Yeah. I influenced Yvonne, I think, to row, to learn to row. So she's rowing with a friend of mine who's, yes. who's, who's training out there. Okay. So occupied homes means that these are homes that people are living in and they're staging them to sell. Yes, absolutely. They're getting ready uh, to go to market using their own furniture, art and accessories. And I come in to advise them on how to set the house up the best way for sale. So from a traditional, if you and people traditionally think staging, they think, okay, I take all of my own furniture out and I'm going to bring in all of this wonderful, amazing furniture and um, create this, this sense of this, this home. And that's really inconvenient and difficult for many people who actually continue to live in their home. So what you're doing is working within the lines of, of what people have. Yes, absolutely. It's uh, you know, uh, we focus on, and that's usually a misconception. People think always when it comes to staging, it's like they think expensive. Now I need to live with rental furniture. And that is very much not true. Um, uh, when you're living in a property, it's very possible to have it staged 
and we focus on photography. So everything that we do is from a perspective of getting uh, the best photos possible for marketing material. Uh, mm -hmm. And you can use, I think 98% of all my clients don't need anything when I come through. Nice. Yeah, I found that with my clients too. So the first time I had a home staged, I had a listing, uh, people were coming in and they'd look at this three-legged table in the hall and they go, how is that standing up? <laughs> and it was placed against the wall. Actually, it might have just been a two-legged table. It was placed against the wall. And, um, and so the stager came in and she's like, that table's got to go. And sure enough, like the next week, at an open house, people are like, oh, I love that skylight. Like the focus totally changed. Yeah. 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 And it's yeah. kind of works like family photos where the tall things need to be in the back and the shorter things need to be in the front because otherwise your plant is the biggest thing in the photo. So look at everything and, you know, flow of the house. How can people walk through with ease? So there's many elements that you can use to make the house look, look more appealing and work more functionally. Okay. So let's, uh, let's actually start the show here. Let me just add it to the stream and I'm going to start the show, which means I won't be able to see what's going on. So Yvonne, we'll just say next slide, please. Yes. Well, you know, one of the very important elements that gets uh, not a whole lot of attention in, uh, when preparing for sale is paint colors and colors in general. So I'm going to talk today about the right paint color when you're selling. So uh, curb appeal is very important. This is a, um, for Calgary, a heritage home. Um, mm -hmm. and after, you know, got ready for sale, it looked very tired. Um, but if you look at the next slide, um, we used heritage paint colors to uh, refresh this house, took the sunshades off and uh, painted all the gutters and fascia, and it looks brand new. I also see you changed out the blinds so that you've got consistent, like a more consistent and more yeah. modern look. It felt very old and tired yeah. and, uh, yeah. and now it looks fabulous, new. I like the addition of the snow in the yard too. <laughs> That's you don't see that. <laughs> yes. It's a nice touch. There are, they are Calgary pictures. Yes, for sure. So yeah, if you go to the next one. So this was, you know, and we, I'm sure you come across many properties that you kind of go like, what were they thinking? But this mm -hmm. is where the parents moved out, the kids took over the house, and one of the daughters uh, took over the uh, primary bedroom. Um, so it looked more like a dorm room than anything else, and they were getting ready to list. So if you look at the next one, decluttering and painting everything in a neutral color made mm -hmm. the room feel twice as large. And you can see to professional photography, right? what a yes. difference that makes. And now it's a true master bedroom. So yeah, a lot of people ask me the question because this is one of the photos that I won my awards with. But if you really dig into the previous photo, um, you can see the bed in the ottoman under the Mickey Mouse. <laughs> oh yeah. And right. the carpet's the same too. Yes, it is. It got cleaned. How about that? Right. Yes. Wow. So I, it's I all work about with, the details. Yeah. I see a lot of buyers who will you know, they get really interested in a house and they want to see it because, um, you know, they love the photos yes. and it's really a challenge to teach them to, you know, even when they see the photo in the prior image to teach them to still want to see that house. Yeah. It's a big one to overcome. It's 80, I, I bet you 85% of people cannot see through this and would no. walk away from it. Because at the end of the day, it's the same house. Yes. Well, this is a condo that I was invited to. And as you know, condos uh, have a very small floor plan. Mm. And with a dog and a baby and mama's grandma uh, furniture, uh, it became, uh, I called it a smarty box because it really was. I, I even felt overwhelmed when I walked in. This one had been on the market for eight months and they didn't understand why it didn't sell. You so, said a smarty box, did you? Yes. It's like all these colors, right? Yeah. My, my house was like that too. Well, if you live in it, that's totally okay. But if you're selling it, it's a different... Uh, we, we just painted it all white. Well, like, and I, I, I mentioned the color because I get a lot of questions about this. So here we took the hutch out. We turned the table. Um, you know, a different chair was brought in from a nursery. So this is all her own stuff. Mm. Um, and it got painted. And the floor actually got extended into the kitchen. So that's the, that's the change. But massive, right? This is a massive change. So, and that really is like the power of paint. It really is. Absolutely. Wow. Um, right? Yeah. Wow. So, right. And that so red door was really distracting too. Yes, very distracting. <laughs> <laughs> the red door was like, whoo. Um, 
Right now, we see the trend of very dark paint colors, and mm. people have fully embraced it. Um, kids' bedrooms, in general, have a lot of color in them and a lot of things. Um, so this was a children's bedroom uh, that needed to, well, the house needed to go in the market, and I asked them to paint, and they did. So if you see the next, that's the oh. same room, same artwork, right? So it's like, yeah. it looks so much lighter and brighter and calm, and I think... Not everybody comes in with children. If you have older children, it's a very big difference between young and old children, right? right. How they approach a room. But this feels inviting. And if you then after want to add like, I don't know, wallpaper or an accent wall, you can, but mm -hmm. now you can actually see through it. That splash yeah. of color in the in the art is, it, it's nice when you've got the neutral of everything else. Yeah. But otherwise it, it's just, there's just too much going on here in this first. Well, it was day. the only light in the first photo. <laughs> that artwork yeah <laughs> and it's interesting because the floor is dark right and yes. um in this one it just like all the cover color yeah. absorbs every single piece of light but this one is reflected yeah mm -hmm. so light bedding right light walls calm and then the floor is actually a feature right then you don't you're not so distracted by it okay so this was a uh, what we call flex room in a condo so you know, a lot of young people live in this building and you really have to look at your demographic when you're selling. Um, yeah. and so these people had a baby uh, and then the flex room turned into nursery, all sorts of stuff. And she went all out with her pink paint, which is totally fine when you're living in it. If you want to do a pink nursery, please have at her. But we also needed to show people um, the opportunity of that could, could be an office, right? So if you uh, keep it neutral, even the artwork neutral, it's still a nursery. Uh, but now we see more opportunity. Yeah. Wow. It's, yeah. I, I had a client just do this. Actually, he's in the middle of doing it right now. It looks way better. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's still a functional nursery, but you can see how you could use it for something else, like a, a yoga room or, or a, yeah. you know, an office or anything else. Well, and that's what to I think about too when you're selling. It's like people have objections, and when there's objections or questions, they have a reason to talk your price down. So what we feel with younger buyers is that they hire people to do these things. They don't spend a Saturday afternoon with a can of paint and a record on uh, getting this done. And the older generation generally does it that way. So the difference between an older person selling a property uh, between uh, a millennial type of buyer buying it, the millennial buyer will hire a painter uh, and the other group will not. And there's usually between five and $10,000 difference in value that they see needs to be talked off a price when things have to be painted. Right. True. By the way, the floor again is much more of a feature in this one yes. compared to the really. last one. Like right. Yeah. yeah. It gets you know, like washed out. Yeah, for sure. I would say just on the topic of painting um, and having, you know, the people hiring versus doing their own, um, you know, I've had some of my clients decide to do their own paint and I, it has been a mistake. Um, <laughs> I, I can share that 40% of paint sales is because of the wrong color. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's color or it's application. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. I agree yeah. with you. I know. So, uh, so this is, this to is hire an, those, those people. Yeah. This, this, yeah. This is an interesting one because this is exterior. So these people, this house is obviously from like eighties, maybe late eighties, beginning of the nineties. Mm -hmm. Um, they did have a new roof. Everything looked funny. They renovated the entire house uh, on the inside, but the outside still looked very dated. Um, and so what a lot of people don't realize is that there's a lot of elements on a house that you can paint. So brick can be painted, soffits and fascia, um, stucco, all your trim. This house, all the elements stayed with the exception of the brick I painted out. Um, so the red brick on the bottom, and mm. then a stucco and trim. That's so. This is just paint. This update. So you know, I have I'm, a client who I said this to uh, yesterday, actually, and she just cannot see by the color of the house. It's funny. Yeah. Well, it's an investment, and often people, you know, it is important if you're if you're kind of lost to hire somebody that can help you select the right color, uh, and that will take the whole uh, mystery out of this because it well, you can see it makes a huge difference. So now the outside matches the inside. If, if budget's an issue, I mean, they could paint only the trim and perhaps, I mean, they'd still end up with that sort of cream, 
exterior. Oh, yeah, there's ways because I mean the green obviously is the color that makes it dated, right? Yeah. So I also that, I also see that contrast with that sort of trellis under the under the front deck there. Yeah. And and it really just shows that there's a space under there that you have to kind of deal with or something. I like that in the other <laughs> one. It's, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yes. Yvonne, how much does it cost to paint a house in Calgary? Ooh, that's a, uh, I see on the interior and that really depends obviously on size uh, and how dark or light the walls are. So if we go, I would say average two applications would be between five and $10,000 on the inside. And I have seen quotes uh, around the same price point for the exterior if it's stucco. Yeah, like is it sprayed on? Yeah, they spray it on, yeah. And do you use this on elastomeric paint or a specific yeah, kind of paint? You have to. Well, especially because we're dealing with such extreme uh, weather changes here, um, you have to have specific elastic uh, paint for stucco. Otherwise, it breaks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. Sorry. Yeah. Another example, like this was kind of a mid-century modern bungalow, and they made it so cool on the inside. And like the brick, because that's the thing with paint, you always have to select a paint color that works with all the elements that are staying on or in a house. And here the brick was the one that took everything away of possibilities. And so we decided to paint out the brick in a gray and that modernized the whole house. Yeah, it looks really good. I, I, I do find here though, that having a dark color is hard to maintain because uh, in the yeah. sun, it, in the summer, it gets too hot. What do you think, Andrew? Yeah. You do. I mean, you do have to watch that. Um, I mean, if you've got a good, efficient heat pump or something, that will help. But you know, why have it fighting against the elements? Yeah, you know, um, when you pick, pick a paint color, you have to look at the exposure too. So this one was north facing on mm -hmm. the garage door. So if you had a south facing uh, house, I would not recommend this dark. No. Yeah. Okay. So here's your typical um, condo or it's a townhouse. And when you walk in, so this is kind of the psychological effect of colors. Here you walk in, you think they have done nothing since it was built. Like you look at the handles, they're at an angle. It's like all this funny trim. And so people don't, uh, not alone look at the paint colors, but they also think what else hasn't been maintained, right? So they think of bigger things like furnaces, uh, roof and things like that. So this is the same kitchen. Uh, we have a company here in town that sprays countertops, which is brilliant quick. Uh, and they give five year warranty on the spray. So this is a fully updated kitchen, same kitchen. Mm -hmm. right oh and so God. Vinyl, right yeah. so vinyl plank was put in kitchen was sprayed counters were sprayed and it sold right away so uh, when i first saw the first picture here before we moved to the second one i thought you know how hard would it be to remove the um trim that's on the front facing on the island on the peninsula and on those and you, you chose to keep them because that's the simpler op option obviously and, and removing them would mean a lot of uh, repair, I would assume. Well, and they're pretty straight lined. They're not very frilly. So, right. um, you know, we painting it out was brilliant. Yeah. 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 And the changing the poles makes the, is, is where the big difference also yes. like with the yeah. hardware, hardware yeah. takes a place real quickly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, how do they do the countertops? It's a three layer component. And, uh, so this is a company that can reglaze shower stalls, bathtubs, and they can spray uh, laminate countertops or, you know, the ones with the seashell sinks with the marble and stuff, um, they spray them and it's a three layer component. So it's very, very hard. Wow. So wait a sec, they can spray over the seashell sinks? They can, yes. Absolutely. So you still keep the seashell? Well, you know, it's it sometimes, this is a ma was a matter of speed and budget. So yes. here we could not, like when you take the countertops off, you also have to do the backsplash. Right. Um, and then it, it's kind of like domino because uh, yeah. the sink needs to be done, right? All that. So this was a matter of a uh, fast sale, go to market quickly. And yeah, we sprayed it. No, I mean, it is. You, they've yeah. got time, energy, and money. That's what I tell people. There's this, this, those three dimensions and how much of each are you going to put into this? And, yeah. and you know, if you're in the spring market already, you're not going to, I you know, you don't want to recommend people to take three months to, no. do a major reno either or well and it has to reflect the price point of the house right if this was a million yes. dollar property we would have asked to have the counter stop changed good point yeah so working within the means and and, and that goes back to what you said too about who's your end buyer here and exactly. you're not going to really 
you know, tr trick this out. It's like, it's like updating a, it's like supercharging a Pinto. It is, absolutely. <laughs> yes. So you changed the light fixtures here too, hey? Uh, not the fan, that one stayed, but we did do, uh, and that's a simple IKEA track light. So there's yeah. Just modernize it very Let's clean. Because it. it was a young buyer that was going to move into this. And um, yeah, it looked really fun. So really good. Awesome. So yeah, so this is a lot of questions that I get. Um, I like gray. And I'm like, no, gray's out. Or it's phasing out. Uh, every about five years, um, color trends change. So please don't paint your house gray anymore. Um, and that goes the same. I have a lot of investor realtors. They say revere pewter. And I'm like, that has like a yellow green undertone. So no, um, there's, uh, I have a whole book of whites. And what is important is the undertone of the paint that decides which white is the best for you. Um, you cannot select a color in the store. Please don't. You have to see them in your house because there's so many elements that decide on the right color. And all paint is the same. That is also not the case because I see show homes or, you know, spec homes. And after using the bathroom, the, you feel like the glue is seeping down on the walls. Uh, bathrooms need different types of paint. Yes. You need like a, an eggshell or, or uh, something It's actually like water that. resistant. Yeah. Mm. Water resistant. Mold okay. and mold resistant. Yeah. Going back to that, just on a side note, I helped somebody into a home and the baseboards in that bathroom were just destroyed because they'd used sort of an MDF kind of baseboard. And, it, and I, I don't know, it wasn't just about paint, but, you know, solid wood in there because it gets a little wet on that and it just expands. Yes. But people well, when they're doing the rentals water. don't think. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're on the coast and water is huge, right? So yes. it's, uh, and moisture, we are so super dry. So for us, it's not uh, that big of a deal here, but yeah, especially moisture rich rooms like a like a bathroom or sauna room or whatever you have, um, very important to pick the right paint. I have, I have a question, Yvonne, about the last slide. And that's um, if if the myth is that gray is still trending, what is now trending? Well, it, I, I kind of uh, compare it to a wool sweater. So we, are, we have moved to um, like creamer, creamy colors, softer tones. Uh, so if you think of like a sheep wool sweater, that kind of colors are now the trend because everybody is uh, ready for a little bit more coziness. And, um, okay. and so white, light, creamy colors, those are in now. I have a nice, I, I, almost, wore, I almost wore my gray cashmere sweater. So that wouldn't have... Well, you would have been warm. <laughs> I'm rolling my eyes at you. <laughs> you know what's funny? So when we bought this house, this carpet was new, which I I don't really like the color. But um, and with two kids, we decided to keep it because then they would have a place to roll around. But when we when we um, when the dog is older and the kids are older, we're gonna change it. So. I'll be calling you for what color carpet. I'll call over at any time. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, let's go to the next one. Okay. So, yeah, like I say, 85% of buyers cannot see past crazy wallpaper colors and that kind of thing. When you select a paint color, please take all the elements into account that comes with the house. So your, your counters, your cabinets, your flooring color all decides in what spectrum you can look. So not one fits all. Um, you always have to keep in the style of the property. So when you have a heritage home and you turn it into this ultra modern glossy property, it will not feel right. Um, exposure of the house, every room is important. So south facing rooms get more orangey kind of light in, uh, but the north facing rooms get more green light in. Uh, so a blue color on the north will feel more gloomy than in a south facing room. So there's mm -hmm. elements like that. Um, if you want to select a color for living, by all means, please do whatever you love. Uh, but keep in mind that when you're selling, you have to bring it back to neutral. Uh, and trendy colors are wonderful. Uh, same thing for living. Great if you want to add a little bit of color from that's trending right now to a house that's selling. Think of um, pillows or candles or maybe a piece of art. So um, I have a question. So I see wallpaper on the top of of this slide here, <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever that is, can you, can you paint over wallpaper? 
Some you can. Uh, there's like uh, wallpaper. You have to know what kind because there's like wallpaper now that you can strip that you can even use in rental properties. You cannot paint over that. Um, if it really is glued on to like old fashioned glue, uh, you can paint over it. Uh, and any kind of fiber, uh, glass fiber kind of wallpaper you can paint over. That's actually what it's made for. Um, but if you have uh, wallpaper that has been put up with water soluble uh, glue, it will come down. Right. It's a okay. great home recently that had some beautiful velvet on it. Velvet wallpaper. <laughs> it was amazing. Was it red? No, it was yellow, like sort of a goldy. Yeah. And it was vintage. Oh. It actually matched the house. I, I kind of liked it. Yeah, it can be beautiful, but yeah. you have to be careful with it. So I have a question. What did you do with each of these rooms here, actually? Well, the people uh, on the bottom were very uh, proud of their LED lighting that they had a remote control with. And they turned it on because they said, well, we're listing around the Christmas uh, season. So <laughs> people will love this setup. And I was like, well, no. So I asked them actually to turn everything off, which they didn't think was amazing. Um, and the, um, the cloud wallpaper, that all got taken down and painted. Yeah, there was no way around it. You actually <laughs> felt kind of epic in the room after that. So, <laughs> so yeah, uh, you know, we call a uh, paint money in a can because it's such an instant big change, uh, least amount of investment when you're getting ready to list. Uh, people will see the value in it. They love a move in ready house. Uh, even if it might not be the perfect color for them, they still will appreciate the effort you put into it. Um, and so the house will feel maintained, well kept, and so less reason for people to question if you kept it well. So it's, I think, one of the number one investments when you're selling. It's a really good point, and something I always, you know, we I have a three strike rule when going through homes, and um, I mean it's my own rule. Buyers have their own rules, so you don't make decisions for them. But the fact is, is that as you go through a home, you're going to start to notice how it's been cared for. And if you're seeing that it's been well cared for, you assume that other things have been well cared for as well. And if you see a couple of issues or problems, you assume that they're gonna find other problems as well. So it's really important to um, to show that the home has been well cared for. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I have another question regarding people who smoke. I went into a beautiful home. It was a 1920s home retro and you could see the cigarettes stain the the nicotine stains on the walls and it would have been a shame to take down all the the i think it was plaster actually so uh it can paint be used to remove those types of stains no you know what you re and this is a really important question actually because we see this a lot people think oh fresh coat to paint it smells good then and it does uh but what you actually do is you lock in the nicotine smell under the paint uh, and once it's painted, you cannot remove it. So uh, the, the best steps to do it is an ozone treatment in the house. So everything needs to be cleaned first, carpets, whatever you can think of. Uh, all the soft elements like curtains need to be removed. Um, and then an ozone treatment. And once the ozone treatment has been done, then you can paint. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So if you paint over uh, walls that have smoke smell or nicotine in them, um, the minute the sun hits the wall or you turn the furnace on, that smell comes back. Right. Yeah. I actually had somebody remove the nicotine. I had to get them to literally hose the walls down. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can, that's wonderful. A drywall, you can't. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. So, how do people get in touch with you? Well, here's all my information. If you have any questions uh, or, you know, uh, yeah, please feel free to reach out. I am happy to answer questions. So, uh, right. so uh, because we also do this by podcast, you can reach Yvonne at stagingcalgary.ca and her number is Yvonne. 403-630-0541. Okay. okay. That's awesome. I have a couple more questions for you, Yvonne. Have we got a few more minutes? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So I noticed we were talking about, there was one with uh, one of those photos showed an example of, I think the daughter had been living in the, the, the room there, but um, we also, we often list homes with tenants. And do you ever go into a tenanted home and how do you, how do you manage that? Because tenants are not ever as motivated and, and they don't have to, they don't have to clean. So nope. do you have any way of? Yes. 
there's a it, it is more tricky i have to say because they don't have a stake in the sale right they they don't benefit from anything that they do um we always talk more into the side of pride because they do and there's a couple of elements so one is presentation but it also is that people will walk through their property or it's more like with their items in the property so safety is always a concern so i always talk them through what they need to watch for when people come through then people need to be able to see the house without uh having anything in their way but the people that are living also needs to feel safe other people walking through their property, if that makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I kind of tap into that part that, you know, it's really important for them to pack up their things, put their valuables away, uh, make sure that nobody has access to their identity or whatever. Um, but yeah, we focus with tenants on the photography and then we really hope that they will do their best to make it look good for showings as well. So often mm -hmm. people are motivated to get it ready for photography um, and then we, encourage them to do the same for showings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people don't also, always see their own mess. Well, also um, what I say is sometimes people are buying the property as an investment. And so the better you present it, like yesterday I went into a place and it was scary. I know. <laughs> yeah. But the better, like I've had clients just uh, uh, acquire the tenant, so. Yeah, you know, and sometimes it gets sold with the tenants. So then there's there is a stake in it, and they they want to keep their property because it's hard to get a rental these days. And, and, that's so, and they're willing to work. Yeah. Yeah, and that same argument applies so that when this potential new owner is coming through, and they see a potential problem tenant, they might think, "Well, I'm not so interested in t buying this home as an investment," and so it might end up selling to a single family that that kicks the tenant out. Yeah. But if the tenant can really prove and show that they're um, you know that they are going to be a good tenant and cooperative then it might be that that home sells more likely to an investor so it's yeah. all in their best interest exactly and you know it's like it, it will be disruptive for the tenant but it also is more like the kickstart of them leaving or yep. you know staying in a better way so yep. if they're like carpets need to be cleaned and windows need to be washed and you have cleaners coming through maybe the owner organizes those kinds of things then yep. their life gets disrupted anyway and then they you know they feel they need to go so um, not many bad uh, situations we've had with that. So I have two more questions. Um, one is, um, do you do remote consults? Because we're here in Victoria and you're in Calgary. And do you? I guess, yeah, I can. For color, I can't because uh, you have to be on location to, I would not uh, put my name under a color uh, selecting over the internet. Right. Um, but uh, remote consultations for sure. There's many ways to do it. Okay. And then um, I don't know if you care to share this or not, but like cost range for consults and and yeah, a flat fee for a consultation is two fifty uh, mm -hmm. GST. Um, and uh, if it's remote, it depends on you know how extensive the house is. Usually, we ask for photos first, uh, uh, analyze that those, and then do a Zoom call to talk people through the house. Beautiful. I've done it with video with um, a stager I use here. Yeah. Sometimes like they just don't have time to get to the property, especially mm -hmm. during COVID. With COVID, yeah. it's also there's the safety issues as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's many ways to do it. And I mean, we help people all uh, all across the country. So it's uh, it's very possible. Awesome. Or we could, we could get um, a whole bunch of properties ready for spring and inv invite Yvonne over for a weekend. In I Chicago. will come. There you go. <laughs> I'm there okay. often, so you know I'll come. <laughs> Yes. All right. Well, thank you so much. I thank really you. enjoyed today's talk. Excellent. Yeah. Bye. Nice to meet you, Yvonne. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Okay. No problem. All right. So, um, Andrew, uh, yeah. how would you like to tell people how to reach you? Uh, well, they can reach me by phone, phone or text at 250-360-6106. That's 250-360-6106. Uh, or email me info at andrewplank.com and my website andrewplank.com has uh, numerous videos and information as well, including okay. a business directory, which I should be adding Yvonne to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And if people need to reach me, my name is Jane Johnston. I'm with the Briar Hill Group at Remax Camosun. My number is 250 
And uh, my email is briarhillgroup at gmail.com. And you can reach me at Briar Hill Group, where you will see videos on buying and selling, or Vancouver Island Time, where you will see videos on neighborhoods and the show. And don't forget, by the way, hold on to, sorry, Yvonne, subscribe. Oh, I'm sorry, Yvonne. <laughs> I'm gone. <laughs> All right, everybody. Have a great week. So next week, um, what I thought maybe we could talk about is property disclosure statements that came up uh, this yeah. this uh, weekend on our um, show. Sure. On our uh, thing. Yeah. Anyway, okay. All right, everybody, have a great week. Don't forget, every Monday at 10 a.m., we'll see you here. If you have any questions, please give us a call. And uh, Gabriella is saying hello from Nicaragua. So you Hello, Gabriella. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. Bye. See, see you later. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Thanks for coming.